really afraid to ask him that question. It took to 2018 for me to finally come to have the courage to ask, what would you have me to do? And I got the answer, write. I said, okay, mm, write an article for a magazine, maybe an article, a newspaper, or something of that nature. But I still had that uneasy feeling within me. There's something else. I talked with my mom several years, like 2008 when she passed before she became ill. I said, there's something else. I have the de these degrees, but I know it's something else he wants me to do. But sometimes with me, my relationship with God, I always I kind of go back and forth with him. God, thank you for his grace and mercy to tolerate my behavior. Because <laughs> I said, you know, if I ask him this, I said, you know, at this stage of 60 something, you want me to write? <laughs> you know, but God is, God is different from the way we see things. He sees things from a different perspective. So I finally surrender. And I said, yes, whatever you like have me to do, I'm willing. And so here I'm, I right now with the book, he has directed me to write. I'm gonna share certain ex, uh, excerpts from my book. My book has many different settings. I talk about singleness, marriage, career, empty nest, nutrition and exercise and counseling. But I will start with single, singleness and I'm gonna read an excerpt from that. I have to put my glasses on, I struggle with that. It's a fight with me and my glasses also. <laughs> Single women should avoid all visual stimulation with sexual condensation, such as pictures, movies, television shows. These imageries may trigger unwanted desires that may lead to ungodly living. There are many rules humans create to justify ungodly behavior, such as three, 10, and a 30-day rule, date rules before becoming sexually involved. God states this regards sexual God states this regarding sexual relationship as is intended for marriage married individuals. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 2. We're just going to have to love us. <laughs> Regardless of what others may say about us, we have all these these TV programs, all these commercials. So boy, you do this and you'll be wonderful, outstanding. You have to love you and who you are as an individual. And until you do that, you're not gonna have peace. It's not all about us. It's about helping others to become better human beings. And so we have to receive wise counsel or wise counseling. And just because a person is in the church, doesn't mean they're gonna give you wise counseling. Um, you have to be very careful who you seek counseling from, like I stated before. And in my book, I talk about the different, ad, you know, different avenues you can receive wise counseling. Um, I also talk about there was a time in my life I was going through something and I wanted to seek the counsel of my pastor. I wanted to seek the counseling of my, my biological brother, who's a pastor, but the Spirit of God said no, it's between God and I. And I don't, if, I don't push that kind of type of counseling on anyone. You have to know that you know. And, but I knew deep within what he wanted me to do, but I wanted to do it my way, not his way. But thank God I was obedient and I listened because the outcome was beautiful. And in, in conclusion, Writing this book is evident of walking by faith, not by sight. Hebrew, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. My faith in God required me to trust, believe, obey the path God has prepared for me. Sometime during my quiet time with the Lord, walking in the mornings, the middle of the night, a conversation with others, evoke other chapters or additional information for this book. Like the virtuous woman and Antitus woman, we are called to inspire others throughout up many dimensions of life to uplift others, to give hope through Jesus Christ.